We're here at the Fresno Art Museum to learn about this year's Council of 100 Outstanding Women Artists. Thank you for having us, Michelle. It's always exciting to come to Thank our you. Fresno Art Museum. Who is this year's Outstanding Woman Artist nominee? The, Honoree. The selection committee of the Council 100 chose Martha Cassinave, who is a, a portrait photographer, primarily, uh, based in Carmel, Monterey, California. And she's lived there for most of her adult life and she has done her photography from Carmel and Monterey most of her adult life. And I didn't know anything about her. That's the beauty of uh, when I curate these C100 shows, somebody else chooses the artist and then I get to know them and make studio visits and work with them intimately on selecting the show. Because there is a council. Yes, there is a council. they get together and think very hard. Exactly. About who they're going to They do presentations, it takes a full day. Then there's a whole voting process, and it finally is distilled to the final choice. So she is our 33rd Council of 100 honoree. And so for 34 consecutive years, we have honored a woman artist over the age of 60 who lives at least 100 miles outside of Fresno. And um, they have to have established a national, if not an international, reputation. So. She was their choice, and she has been here already and given her lecture, and we've had a luncheon for her and given her presents, and <laughs> it was a lovely day, so. Before I even spoke with her, I thought it would be interesting to do her, some of her portraits of famous people in the art world, taken in the 70s and 80s, and that I would write little bios uh, so that anybody looking at the portrait, if they didn't recognize the person, they could learn about the person as they looked at the portrait. And I needed that as well, so it was for my benefit as well, as, an, as a visitor to a museum. I always put myself in the position of the visitor. Am I getting what I need to from what I'm looking at? So in the, in the portraits of famous people taken in the 70s and 80s, I selected 12 out of hundreds. And we blew them up to this large scale because our walls are vast in this museum and I felt it would be much more poignant to have a few really big than little ones all over the place it would overwhelm anybody, you know, trying to look at the pieces, let alone learn about the people and all of that stuff. So, <laughs> I mean, this is probably one of the yeah. kids' favorites, right? Yes. <laughs> when they come for a tour. Yes. Uh, this is Leo Castelli, who was a very famous New York art dealer he was one of the first art dealers to treat photography as a fine art mm -hmm. medium and show photographers and sell photographers as fine art. So Joseph Brodsky, I've, yes. I've very much heard of him. Yep. Yes. Yeah. And you'll see that every background is different. Uh, she uses their space uh, as part of the power of the piece. She will go to their home, their work, their studio, their gallery, she'll have them leave so that she can be there by herself and look at what's in there, what is them, uh, how can she put them in that space and capture them in a way they would like and the, the viewer can appreciate. So each one is completely different. There is no standard, you know, carte blanche composition. They're all different, one from the next. It must be an interesting experience for the subjects. They, there has to be something where they're thinking, I wonder what she's going to pick. I wonder yes. how she sees me and how she thinks exactly. would be and the best way. And she said, way. when you do portraits of people, they typically hate them. So uh, we all do. I mean, I hate my photog photographs. <laughs> she said, these people are all the same, but over time, they come back and look at them like 10 years later, 20 years later, and it, then they could appreciate what she, what she was doing and what they looked like. But they, it became very self-deprecating and egotistical, you know, rather than not. People are really weird about pictures of themselves. I hate them. Yeah, I it's know. Just, it's, that's probably one of the most common yep. human traits, I think. I think you look in the mirror and you see something and that's who you see. But that isn't what necessarily a camera's going to catch. Exactly. <laughs> I love this one too because 
That just screams Russian poet. It does, <laughs> I mean, it does. Right down to the cigarette. And the shovel. And the shovel. You know, it's like working man. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's just great. Yeah. So this is kind of a place of honor. Yes. This is a place of honor. Center of the room. Yes, because she was very good friends with Ansel Adams. He handed her down cameras that he had. And, you know, she felt a bit of him was given to her when he would do that sort of thing for her. We were talking before about how interesting it is for people to be looking at each other in a exactly. portrait instead of out at the viewer or just off. Exactly. And none of them, a few of them are looking at you directly, but then another co set of them are the opposite. You know, the guy over here is lighting a cigarette, you know, and what you see is his smoke coming up. and. And you can tell they're probably in conversation, but there's admiration here. You know, mm -hmm. there's just absolute appreciation for each other. That word is way used too much these days, but <laughs> there is, there is. Yeah, you can a tell there's a, there's a yeah, bond there. There is a bond there. Yep. Yeah. Have you found that visitors to the, to this show, do they identify with this type of photography because we are so obsessed with image now and people are constantly taking I pictures of each other. I'm, I come out and watch. You know, I, I need to get away from my desk and my phone and my computer, so I'll come out here and just sit down on a bench and watch people because I need to see how they react. Um, most people spend time, which makes, even if you don't like photography, you are drawn to these and you want to know why you're looking at these people and they especially love the Russian pieces mm -hmm. and the fact that they're all vintage um, adds to the magic of them I think because it's not contemporary these people are yeah. gone maybe or they're now in their 70s and not in their 40s or their 30s you know so it's, there's an historical perspective that's built in to this era which I think is makes it all the more interesting and it just goes to show how you know, one very well thought out photo can really kind of stand yeah. the test of time. Exactly. Um, what do you like about this image? Well, he was, he was sort of defiant in his field. He was Chinese. Um, he was very competitive. He, he was very worthy of earning the pr projects he built. And I think he's just saying that to us, you know, I am, I am pay. <laughs> I yeah, am good at what is, I do. Is, this is where, like, the word steely exactly. is a good word. It's yeah. just that look of determination. Exactly, and he's, he's uh, proud of who he is. And the fact that she has that book, and of course he can afford a Picasso. Uh, I, I believe that's made of cardboard, which is interesting because so are architectural models made of cardboard. Hmm. So, and the fact that the, the backdrop looks like a uh, rice paper screen. You don't see buildings behind him. You know, you don't see the symbology. You right. just see him almost silhouetted. So let's talk about Russia. Okay, cool. Now, Martha Kasavin is, is intimately familiar with Russia. Yes. Um, this is Martha. This, is, this part of the exhibition is called False Flag. And both uh, Susan Yost Filgate and I uh, called it false flags. She said, no, 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 it's false flag. So we got used to saying false flag, which comes from the fact that in Russia, what you see is not necessarily how it really is. Mm -hmm. And false flag comes from pirate ships. When they would f take down their skull and crossbones and you know, unfurl the flag of the Netherlands or France or the British Isles so that another ship would think they're a companion sister ship, but as soon as they got close, they would be pirates and jump up and kill them and take their bounty. So false flag is an indication that what you're going to see in this exhibition is not what she shot. So she started going as a young woman. She was uh, translator for the government, for the American government in Washington, D.C. She is a Russian linguist and a Russian literature major in college. So she thought, oh, translator, although she was already establishing herself as a photographer in the photography field, not necessarily in the art world yet. So she thought, you know, I really don't like this job. It's boring. Um, what if I quit? And I took fellow photographers to Russia with me on small tours I know how to get around uh, 
being considered a spy. You know, I, I can probably get us into places that most tour guides wouldn't think to take you. So that's what she did. She quit her translator job and she started taking these tours of her friends to the USSR. So this is entitled Out in the Cold, an American in the USSR. The photography in this section of the gallery, they were shot between 1984 and 95. Mm. So I don't know how many tours she took at that point, but it spans two decades. And yet it's still, there's still vintage images. So when she came home from Russia, there are hundreds of photographs from these trips. When she came home from Russia, she thought, you know, a black and white photograph of this scene is just going to feel like a tour guide book. Hmm. You know, it's, it doesn't have the tweak, the weirdness that you feel when you're over there, when you're an American. And you're seeing something that everybody else lives with, but it's really not beautiful. It's sort of this combination of industrial and... So she decided to hand color all of these black and white prints with pastel. Wow. So as she manipulated these works, I mean, this is all done. I mean, all of it. She, it's so painterly. I mean, she's so capable in shadow and uh, transitions. For instance, in this one over here, this is very visually complicated. And she would take people to uh, other artists' homes or underground cafes where they would gather, um, where most Americans would never be allowed. So here you have this uh, amazing dining room scene. They brought out their best dishes. They are in the process of either completing a meal or about to serve it to people. Behind them is an artwork on top of the wallpaper. There are library books, there's a mirror. And yet she hand colored this, you know, so that every glint on the back of the wooden chair, the way the light bounces off these sections around this mm. reflection, the gradation in this wallpaper or this painting to set it apart from the wallpaper behind it. I mean, these took hours and hours. The hundreds that you mentioned, no. did she color all of them? I don't think so. I didn't look at all of them, but I'm not sure. But I know the ones she felt the best about are all hand colored. Mm. And I sat with photo boxes on my lap. That's how I looked through things. And she take the lid off. We had a coffee table. We just go through them one by one. I see what you mean. There is this, like, there, in some of them, there's almost a sense of menace. Ominous. It's ominous. ominous and, and menacing, yes. I mean, um, this, this could be such a pastoral, exactly. lovely pasture and cows and river, and it's red. You know, it feels polluted. It feels polluted. It, it feels, feels industrial. Polluted. Yeah. It, yeah. And then I love her photographs that are unusual views mm. you know she's probably down here at the base of the tree shooting up capturing you know the upper part of a building yeah um, you see just enough of the building to get yeah you know, know you're that in a building. city yeah yeah and yeah. this is a self-portrait of herself in a motel room oh. and in those that's days a great that's great tv isn't yeah it? isn't it i'm sure the kids <laughs> must come in here and say i probably what had is that? one exactly <laughs> is that, a is that a, something from mars and i love this one because once again, she's done a, a detail of something. So you're not sure if you're looking at a relief carved on a something, or this is a three-dimensional sculpture, mm -hmm. but the way she's colored it and, and truncated the angel yeah, figure. Yeah, you, know you know it's an I angel. I love this. Yes, you yeah, know it's an angel. It's also a naked angel. Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> so. and this snowy, you know, barren land, you have this gorgeous teal blue wall right. and this Gorgeous and the, the, angel. Feet, the feet are, are fascinating. Yeah. Uh, this one is one of my favorites. This is on the cover of her catalog. The cover of the catalog. This is uh, Mother Russia. And it's a sculpture, but once again, you just see a detail. It's been raining, so mm. it, it could be tears. But the work with the pastel on this is phenomenal. I mean, if you think of how she's managed, uh, this almost looks like a, she's been cut. Yeah. You know, that her neck has literally been, is flesh. Right. And Somebody this is slashed. a sore yeah. wound. You know, it has a uh, 
feeling of flesh, not stone, yeah. anymore. And um, I just love this piece. And I have her facing linen. I thought that was poignant. This was a film set that was being dismantled. Mm. But it's, it's also, uh, she felt a statement about the, uh, Soviet Russia and USSR and how things were being dismantled. And once again, she makes this all red. You know, mm -hmm. this could be blood. I, I hate to be so visceral about it, but the sky is bloody, the, the wood piles are bloody, you know, everything's red. And then I love these because they're beautiful, you know, and, mm -hmm. and um, but I love- But still a little bit ominous. Yeah. At the same time. Right. This is kind of what I think of Russia right. in some ways. But it makes me want to, we're in the courtyard looking up. Yes. You know, we're at the yeah. foot of the front door looking up and I want to, it makes me want to see the whole thing, you know, because they're so intriguing. And she frames this one with these gnarled, barren branches and this house is so rococo, you know, so decorative. And then this is much more plain, but it also looks uh, Middle Eastern, you know, with the mm -hmm. uh, arches and the turrets. I ended the show with this one because it's totally unique in, in the selection that I made. But this is a Christmas pageant, and it's not, it's so bizarre. I mean, you yeah. have these kids in the front who almost look like Nazi kids, right. you know, doing their salute, and there's a fervor about them that's weird. Then you have Father Christmas and Mother Christmas back there, and it's, it's just twisted. <laughs> you know, and I think that a lot of these images, and calling them, false flag is twisted. You know, what you see is not what you see. Well, but you also see this strange, yeah. kind of almost a roof that could be some 1960s parking garage. Exactly. It's design. not pretty. You know, yeah. it's not. It's so not, you know it's not in an idyllic no. Russian village somewhere. Exactly. Yeah. And just the fact that they're saluting and yelling. But it's just a great image because you're, they're right in our face. I mean, we could be in the parade, you know, and turn sure. around and they'd be right there. Sure. So people still have time to see this yes. show? Yes, it's Can up through December. It's how up through how long it runs? It run, it's been six months, so it'll, be, it'll end in December, okay. and your catalog will give you the exact dates. And then we'll close the month of December for changeover. And we reopen oh, the with, month of January? Yeah. Okay. And then in February, early February. We'll and you also December. have the, the Maurice Sendak? Yes. Show. Yep. It's All of kind the of shows a big blockbuster. Yep. Yeah. The museum is a great place to visit in, in Christmas time, too. Isn't it is. It? it is. We're having family day with Santa and Mrs. Claus on December 10th. And it's great because the place is filled with kids and their parents and grandparents. Yeah, there's nothing quite like a museum at Christmas. Yeah. That's a, yeah. Good, that's a good time. Well, thank you as always, thank Michelle, you, Donald. for this tour. Thank you we for sharing it. and sharing our place with other people. We hope they come visit. That's what we're here for.